Hello and welcome down onto the Tech Desk and in today's video we're going to be looking at this. This is the Manba One controller with its USP which is this, the screen that controls some functions on your controller. So in this video I'm going to break down everything you get in the box then we're going to talk about the controller and we'll spin through that quite quickly because I want to get on the functions of the screen because there's some lots of things to like about this but there's some things you really need to know before you go out and purchase this. Um, I think you can pre-order this because they sent me this before pre-production. I think there's time to change a few things on this we'll talk about that in the video but i'll leave links down below where you can go and have a look at it so before i start off though i have connected this to my switch um i haven't really used it much on the switch uh, because of the button configuration if you look on there that's a and b and y and x that's kind of like the wrong way around for the switch which is b and a and y and x there um so i've been mainly using this on my pc but it also does pc um switch ios and android as well but 99.9% um, .9 of my time I've been using this on the PC and we'll talk about that later. But for the purpose of this video, there's some nice features that I can kind of like demonstrate on this controller by using the switch menus. It just makes it easier for the camera, okay? Right, so let's crack on then with things that you get in the box, okay? So you get yourself a nice manual, nice big manual. There's only a few translation errors, which I'll let them off. A uh, nice big manual to tell you all about how to use it, which is fantastic. You also get yourself some replaceable thumbsticks. These are two long ones. I've got two short ones on there. And all you do is you pull them off like that and then you clip them back on. There's a certain way for you to clip them back on. There we go. They're on there like that. So you can have them uh, long ones or the short ones entirely up to you. And you also get yourself a generic USB type C cable. Uh, fantastic, I don't use these because I have one plugged in over there. But also if you didn't want to use, charge it up via the USB, what you can do you can use this so this is the charging dock now this is really good so you can pop that on there and you can charge it fantastic okay right your scenario is you're on your PC which I've been using most of the time for this PC okay you've got this on your PC desk like so plunk it on charge it up good to go if you want to use it on PC you've got to use this dongle here so this is taking up one USB port on your PC this needs to be charged so this either needs to take up a second USB port on your PC or a whole plug socket plugged into uh, a USB plug socket somewhere, okay? Now, USB ports on my PC are a premium. I don't want to have to use two USB ports for this, so we're having to use this plugged into a, piece, a, a socket somewhere. Bit of a pain. What I would like to have seen is to have the USB in there. For example, this is the 8-bit do controller okay this has a very similar dock to it and if you open it up at the bottom you can see that you can plug your usb in there and it connects to your pc so you're only using one usb you can't do that i think that is a missed opportunity there i just would like to have seen that to be able to do that this this costs um i think it's 70 dollars on pre-order i just think it would have been nice to have just to have a little bit more thought in this but if you're going to be using it on the pc because it is designed to i say it's designed to be a pc more than a switch controller for the for the button configuration and then this is the box it comes in because on the back here you have a black color now this is the white version okay so it does two black and the white but this is the white one and if we go over it the controller itself. So we have the asymmetrical design, the D-pad, the buttons there, and we have four buttons here, back, square, home, and start, which we'll talk about those in a bit for the functions. And if you look in there, you can actually see the rumble motors down there, which is a nice touch. Big, nice screen on there, which we'll talk about in a bit. On the side, we have the Mamba and this color strip here, which you can customize. Again, we'll talk about that later. On the top, we have LB, RB, um, right trigger and left trigger. And then on the back, we have these switches here to change them from analog to digital, we'll talk about in a minute. And we have the paddles and the on-off switch. And then on the top, the USB-C there to charge it up. So let's go over it in a bit more detail then. The, 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 the thumbsticks here, they're Hall Effect. I'm expecting Hall Effect on every single controller now from now on. Every third party controller has to have Hall Effect sensors um, because there's just too many that have them. And if you haven't, you're missing out. Oh, they feel good. They feel nice. We'll talk about the settings later on because there's something you can change in it. And that's why I've got the switch so I can visualize it for you. But we'll talk about the um, responsiveness and the dead zones on that in a bit. Now the D-pad, it's the disc D-pad. Personally, it's, uh, I was getting on okay with it, to be honest. It is a very personal opinion, the D-pad, but for me, it was clicky. I like it to be nice and clicky, which it is, and I didn't have any issues 
click in any of the eight ways on there for me personally. Uh, right thumbstick, exactly the same as the left thumbstick. And these buttons here, the so the, what we got the Y at the top was like I say in the PC configuration, Y, X, B and A. Uh, yeah, they feel okay. They're nice and high. They depress down. There's a, probably a two millimeter travel. Not clicky like every other controller button I'd say there's no issues with them and then those four down there they're just clicky buttons no nothing out of the ordinary there okay let's talk about the triggers then so up here we got the um, bumpers now they are very clicky very clicky and they have this nice like texture to them I really like textures on there to give it a little bit of a grip which is good and then we have these um, analog triggers here but as we saw about here, you can flick them to be make them digital, so to speak. Okay, so it kind of like stop their uh, trigger stops. Okay, so that's kind of like your switch version, and that's your PC version. Okay, so look how far that goes down there like that, and then that one goes down there like so. Okay. Okay, and then moving down here, we have four paddles. I love paddles on there. I think if you don't use paddles, try and get used to them because I think they are superb. They really make a good addition to when you're gaming. That one's nice. So those two are nice down the bottom there. The issue I have is with the M1 and M2. They, they've got a nice grippy texture to them. It's just that they're a little bit uncomfortable to be moving your finger up there like that. So I don't use these competitively. So I don't use them for things like you know, firing or jumping or anything like that. I just use these two here and these two for things like menu or start or home or something like that, because you can map them. Uh, again, we'll talk about that later and when we talk about the screen. Okay, so I've just been using these. And then talking about comfort, a um, couple of little niggles here because the faceplate comes off. So let's Okay, there we go, like that. You can change different face plates for it if you want to. It means that there is a, um, a join there and it just sticks out a bit there where the gap is for you to put your fingernail in. Okay, so in there, there's a little gap and where the uh, RGB is there, it's just a little bit of a gap and you can feel that in your palm a little bit. It's a little bit more uncomfortable, which I can get used to. What I've really annoyed me is these bits here. So there's a big ridge here. I have no idea why, right? So there's there, look at that. There's a ridge there. So when you're holding it, your fingers are on the ridge. It's not smooth. So your fingers are there and that's really annoying. Okay, so I've been tending to use it kind of like this because I don't want my fingers around there on that ridge. So as I said, it connects a Switch, a PC, a iOS and Android, and I have connected it to my Switch for the purposes of this video. Um, we might as well see if it wakes up the Switch. Um, it does, however, it's a bit temperamental. Uh, sometimes it does, which it's done now, so I can say, yes, it does wake up the Switch. Just a couple of times it didn't, and I'm not sure, I couldn't replicate as to why. But anyway, so we've done that. Um, um, what I want to do now is talk about the screen. Uh, because there's a few things here and here that I want to talk about. If you're just leaving it and you've got it connected to whatever you've got, you've just got this, basically this Wolf Den logo on there. Sorry, the Manba logo on there. Um, that's it. We've pressed home three seconds to settings. Uh, that's always on the screen, which is which is okay. Um, you've, you've got a screen, use it. Let us change it to something or have something different information on there. But what I do love is that it has the battery information. That is a really, really good feature that I want to stress a lot. Having the battery on there is fantastic. And then speaking of the battery, it says it runs at about eight hours. Um, I haven't tested this personally because um, I'm always just sticking it on the controller dock just to charge up. So it's actually never gone flat, but that's really nice to be able to have the battery icon on there. So as it says on the screen, we need to press home three seconds for settings. And that is the home button. That is the plus button uh, square and back. So you're using these four plus a combination of the sticks or the D-pad to do the menu. So if we hold down this for three seconds, one, two, three, and you'll notice there, look, it also does the switch controls as well. So you just need to be careful. If you're using, this, using the screen, it also uses whatever it's connected to, which is a bit, yeah, a bit weird. So we got the pair there, so you can pair this to, uh, the only one of them to, you don't hit one of these buttons, you hit this button here. So you can hit pair, and it will pair into whatever mode you're doing in. Let's just come back out of that. And then, so we go to mode, 
We can select which one we want, so switch which we've got it connected to. Uh, PC, iOS, or Android, click whichever one you want, and then go into whichever one, the PC, the switch, or the iOS, Android, and it will just do the, the pairing automatically from there. Uh, if we hit back, now we're gonna go over to settings. So if you go into settings here, this is where you have uh, four different profiles. You have zero, which you can't change. You have one, which you can change two and three. So you can go into these and change to any ones of these kind of like profile settings. Uh, the only way to change them is by going into this screen. So you're having to hold this down for three, move move down to the mode, to the settings, to this, to that, to that, to change to that. Okay, so it's not on the fly. So it's not particularly quick. But let's go to settings one, uh, and then we can change the buttons there. We can change any of these buttons if you want to, and here's where we change the paddles, okay? So change M1, M2, M3, and M4. So let's change M4. Uh, let's change that to be whichever one we want. Let's change it to Y, okay? And then it says there, yes is the plus. So we hit yes, let me go done. Save successful, then that's done. And then you just change that for whichever buttons that you want. Uh, next up, we have the joystick. So let's go in here and then we have the left and the right joystick. So let's do left is uh, default, immediately, day, delay and high performance. So if we select on default and we've got the left stick here, what we can do is we can go into our switch and we'll do the left stick. Okay, so now we are on, oh, if we go back into the settings here, uh, we go to settings and we go down to one, uh, we'll change it to one, okay? And then we'll change the joystick here. So we're in default at the moment, okay? So. We've hit the edge now. It's got, yeah, a couple of millimeters dead zone at the side, but hardly any in the, in the center. Now what we'll do is we're going to flick this down to immediately. Okay, so let's change this to immediately. We've hit the edge now. Uh, it's about the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's change this now down to uh, joystick. Let's change it to delay. Okay, so now we're on delay on this. Okay, not, not so much there. And then about two millimeters on there. Okay, fine. Now let's change the joystick to high performance. Okay, so now I'm on the third one. So now I'm on this one here, the last one, high performance. Uh, let's, okay, so. Out, out, out. Okay, no. Right, as you can see, uh, there seems to be absolutely no difference between default, immediately, delay, and high performance. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe it's a software thing, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be any difference at all in any of them. So let's stick that back onto default, go back, and then we'll go down to vibration. Okay, so if you go onto the vibration, we have minimum, which is kind of off. Next one, can you see the motors moving there? then 100%. It's not HD rumble. It's a nice soft thudding rumble, okay, more than anything. Uh, let's see if I can, uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to visualize that, but it's a decent enough rumble, okay. And uh, let's just make sure that's down to off. And then if we go back again, uh, we're on setting one and we go back again. Next up, we have the help language and screen LED. So if we go into the screen LED, we have three settings. We have the screen brightness. Now this is as bright as it goes. For me, that's not bright enough. It needs to be brighter. Uh, frankly, that's not good enough. Even if I kill the lights, not very bright. And then if I go over to here, so this is the the, uh, the colors here, we can change the colors on the side. Again, let's knock these off. So we can change these, blue, green, uh, yellow, orange, red. And then rainbow, uh, there, like so. Um, and then we hit, we change these, keep these lights here. So we can keep the light on so it stays on all the time. We can have it breathing, 
or we can turn it off if you want to, okay? Uh, that's nice to be able to have it on the screen here, but let's be honest, I'm changing this once and I'm leaving it. So I have never, uh, I've never actually gone into that. I've gone into that once when I first got it and I haven't used it since. Okay, so that's the screen there. So a few other functions, there's, um, in terms of the switch, this is kind of irrelevant, but it doesn't have NFC. Um, it does have motion control, and with PC, it has X input and D input, which you change by pressing the, the different buttons. Right, so that was my look over here. Let's run through this. What do I like about it? I think it looks good. I think it's got nice RGB. I like the idea of the screen. Um, I like the charging dock. Uh, few negatives are, it's a bit of a faff to get the, the screen to do all the settings. I think it's a wasted potential. I think it could have done so much more with this screen, unfortunately. Things that annoy me a little bit is like, the sticks don't seem to correlate with the what's going on on the screen here. You're still connected to your device when you're doing the, um, the inputs there. The dock, you have to use two USB ports if you want the PC with, with the dongle. Um, it's good, don't get me wrong. I do like this controller. I just think it could be so much more with this screen. This, maybe it just needs a software update. Maybe it just can be doable so much more. I would just love to have more information on this screen if you're going to have this screen. And this is going to be the big selling point because it's basically just to change your settings, which let's be honest, if I'm on the PC, I could do that on a Mac. So give me an app or give me more information on this screen here. Okay, so that was my look at then, the Mamba one. A uh, bit of a missed opportunity for me, but it's nice to know that there's a little bit more innovation in PC controllers nowadays. Okay, if you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, please do like, please do subscribe until the next video. Bye-bye.